Hey everybody, it's Jason Blah here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about one of the misconceptions that's out there, and this, this largely comes from uh, people with a physique type background becoming personal trainers and coaches and everything else, and that's the reality is that one rep max training is actually the safest way to train heavy. And there's some reasons for that, and for people who don't grasp that, they need to understand that there are not only gyms that max out every day, there are actually people right now conducting research who have PhDs in the field who work with real athletes who have them train to a 100% one rep max seven days a week. No days off. Okay, let that sink in for a moment. These are PhDs working with athletes and doing research on this. And this passes through ethics boards. And in fact, the ethics boards in the United States who look at sports science literature have one rep max testing is, is considered to be a perfectly normal and safe means of testing strength in test subjects. In other words, even the, the experts in the fields who look at the ethics, the PhDs and researchers who look at the ethics behind this don't think that it's high risk. And people almost never get hurt in any of these studies doing it. Why? Because maxing out is safe. Maxing out is safe. It's normal. It's a perfectly normal part of athletes training all over the world. Because most coaches, most strength coaches out there realize that getting stronger makes you better at a lot of sports. Most sports. Particularly contact sports, though. You go to high school and college weight rooms all over the United States, and in many cases around the world, guys are maxing out all the time. One rep maxes. Now, people would say, but isn't it dangerous? You're lifting a heavy weight. Well, you have to lift heavy weight to get strong. If you want to maximize your strength potential... You have to lift really heavy. But people get this idea that lifting heavy is, is somehow dangerous if you go as hard as possible. So what will they do? They'll have people do triples. They'll do fives. They'll do things like that. And notice I'm throwing in failures in here in the background. You guys watch me miss lifts and I get up and finish training. I'm missing lifts that are over 500 and over 600 pounds in some of these. And people who watch the real-time vlogs know that what happened. I finished my training. I did the rest of my workouts after. Then I came back and trained again the next day. That right there, miss lift. You saw me miss a 605 pull. You guys watched me get pinned under a 522 box squat. Guess what? You finish your workout. And for people who are looking at that, who are saying, oh, I would never max or have my clients max, but you'll do a five rep set to failure. You don't realize that that's more dangerous than what I'm doing. You guys are watching me do that. I'm a 42 year old. By the time this video comes out, I might be 43. Who knows? The time this goes live. I turn 43 next month. You're watching me miss five and 600 plus pound lifts and just crawl out from under it and keep training uninjured should tell you something should tell you something so why is it safe because if you're used to maxing out and you know basic form when you max out you are focused you're concentrating you're tight you're braced okay there's no fatigue with a one rep max. When you miss a one rep max, it is not due to fatigue. I want to make that clear. It's not because you're tired. It's not because you got several reps in and then and then form broke down and you got loose and got pulled out of the out of your groove. It's because you weren't strong enough to lift it. But because you put yourself into position when you're maxing. You're only doing one rep. You can concentrate. You can focus. You can get your mental cues down. You have everything pulled in tight. If you miss a lift, stuff tends to just go straight down. Okay, Like when you guys watched me miss that squat, I just dropped me onto the pins. I missed that deadlift. I, I again, missed the lockout. It just turned loose pretty much. It drops to the ground. You're tight. You're prepared. You're usually set in a position to where if things go bad, you tend to just go straight down. 
or the weight just turns loose. You don't get pulled into crazy directions because you don't have fatigue. It's just not being strong enough. You didn't generate enough force to lock the weight. Therefore, it has to come back down. But look at these. These are considered lists that a lot of people consider dangerous. Deadlifts, squats. But no injuries there. Nothing pulled. Nothing even strained. But you see all the time, people, well, I got hurt doing a heavy deadlift or a heavy squat. How many reps did you do? And you probably was on a several rep set, which means it wasn't that heavy. Heavy enough to hurt you when you used bad form and were really fatigued. That's what it was. But it wasn't maximal weight. Because maximum weight that you can only do one rep or less than one rep with just usually comes down. You're still tight. What happens when you miss a three rep set? What about a two rep set? All right? You want to see how guys get hurt. They get cocky. They go to do a max and it feels light. They're like, oh, I got more in the tank. So they go for a second rep. Or a third rep. Well, if you're dealing with weights that are getting like that up above 85%, or in that case, maybe 90%, that's still a relatively heavy weight. What happens? Form starts breaking down. You get fatigued. You lose your tightness. You lose your bracing on the second rep, the third rep, the fifth rep. Okay? You are losing your position. Your bar path is changing. You're no longer in your ideal bar path that you set up perfectly to do one rep. Where you had everything tight, everything locked in, everything pulled in. That gets loose after the first rep. You get loose and you get fatigued. You lose your focus because of moderately heavy or fairly heavy weight. I mean, 85, 90% of your max is, is a relatively heavy weight. You're now fatigued and getting sloppy with it. Well, that's where you get hurt. And I'll say even a, a five or six rep set to failure. Your five rep max with sloppy, bad form where you got loose and you're tired and you're starting to breathe heavy. Things are going bad. Well, that's where you get hurt. Weights above 80% when form breaks down due to fatigue. All right, that's when you get hurt. Because you lost your tightness. You lost your groove. And that was a wonder at max right there. See that lift right there? That was everything that I had. Had I gone 10 pounds heavier, I would have missed that lift. There you go. So it was fairly fast. That was a full max. This one right here too. And you can tell. You can tell because look at the way my form shifts a little bit. I'm having to use a little bit of compensatory strength. It's everything that I have. Those lifts were everything that I have. But I'm fine. Look at that. That's a max. Look at that speed. That's slow. That's 502 pounds there. That's everything I had. They're fine. Because the form doesn't break down. People say, well, some of that, I see a little bit of compensatory strength. You see a little compensatory strength, but it's not fatigue. It's having to compensate a little bit. Sometimes a little bit more hip or a little more back has to take over or whatever's going on. All right, something is, is it shifting so that you can lock out that maximum weight because it's at your limit and your weaker muscles are starting to come out. They're, they're being displayed but you're still tight. You're still braced. And you start losing that on reps. You lose tightness when you go for a second rep or a third rep or a fifth rep. I mean, failing a six rep set is dangerous. Okay, that's dangerous. I'll, I'll agree. But had I missed this right here, look at this. Had I missed this, come down. It's everything I had. Had I missed this, what's going to happen? Look at where the bar, midfoot. She's going to come straight down one of the safeties. Would have been perfectly fine. Because I'm not pulled all the way forward. It's not going to good morning me. It's going to come straight down. Because I'm still tight. So when you get loose, 
deadlifts when you start getting sloppy and you get arm bend and you start bouncing it off the floor. When you bounce that third rep off the floor because it's getting heavy, that's when you herniate a disc. That's when you tear a bicep. It's fatigue, not weight, that hurts you. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.